ladies and gentlemen, while you uh, continue to eat, I, I wanted to go ahead and introduce our, our guest speaker so that, that he has full time and then you have time for questions and answers. Um, and, and I'll tell you, getting to know Jim a little bit, he, he really would like you to ask questions when, when he pauses at that moment uh, at, at, when he finishes his remarks. He spoke to a group of uh, leadership, ethics, and law instructors early, earlier today, and, and I can tell you the question and answer part was, was very impressive. Um, let me just tell you a little bit about him. He's the type of person that, because of his talents, has touched your life, and for many of you, you don't even know it. Uh, he has provided executive leadership for Pathmark, uh, which is a supermarket chain that's mainly here in the, uh, in the Northeast for Safeway, that if you're out and about in Maryland, you'll see Safeways, for Albertsons, which are in various places around the country. Uh, he also was handpicked by Sam Walton. Sam Walton is the founder of Walmart. And Sam Walton handpicked him to expand Walmart into the super Walmarts. <laughs> Uh, that added the grocery side to the Walmart chain. And this is the person who designed that and implemented that for, uh, for Walmart. Now, if you haven't had any interaction with any of those four organizations, you might have had a cup of coffee at a place called Starbucks, which uh, Jim was the president and CEO. Uh, in 2006, he was uh, selected as one of the top 25 CEOs in the world. Uh, quite, a, quite a title. He's currently the president and CEO of Hagen uh, Incorporated out in the Pacific Northwest, which is a grocery chain there. He's gone out there to mainly help them get back on their feet and move forward. But I'll tell you primarily why I have him here today, is that in 2006, he made a presentation at a leadership conference here at the Naval Academy. I've listened to a lot of leadership talks. I've read a lot of leadership books and it was one of the best that I had ever heard. I took notes, and it actually affected the way that I did some of my leadership. And I consider that to be someone who is impacting people. He was the CEO of Starbucks at the time. After he left Alumni Hall where he spoke, he went down to the local Starbucks here on, uh, on the dock and spent the good portion of the day talking to his employers, employees there listening to them of how things could be improved, asking them about their goals and vision for their own lives, sharing some thoughts with them. But he also took a young lieutenant with him who was transiting out of the Naval Academy into the civilian world to work as a training manager in Starbucks. And he spent an hour with this individual one-on-one. -on -one. Now, we're talking about an organization that has, at that time, about 15,000 stores, 43 countries, and he took an hour with someone who was going to be at a fairly low level within the company. But he cares about people. And I think you will find that as you hear him talk about leadership today. So I think we're very fortunate to have Jim Donald, who I consider to be a leader of honor, courage, and commitment, to spend a little time with us. Jim, the floor is yours. Can you imagine? The expression that was on the face of 1,800 people when I walked up to the podium after they had just eaten breakfast with the styrofoam ice chest. As a matter of fact, it was just like your expression as you sit here right now wondering what the heck this guy is doing with this box. But I, I came over to the table and I set the box down and I went to grab these gloves. They're thinking the same thing you're thinking, I'm telling you. But here's the story. It was April morning, 1997, and I was seven months as the chairman CEO of Pathmark. This company should not have even existed. It was basically bankrupt. No capital was being spent, surly employees, tenured employees, but it was falling fast. My friends to this day say, why did you take that job? Well, I was full of honor, courage, and commitment, and I figured I could turn this thing around. And after seven months of talking to all of the employees, going head-to-head -head with the manufacturers that supply us with goods, showing them, we didn't have PowerPoint then, it was called 
slides <laughs> of bar graphs of sales trends, of return on investment formulas that were negative, of, cat, of, uh, of, of interest rates that were basically killing us, suffocating us on this huge debt we had, it wasn't working. After seven months, I gave it my best and nothing was happening. So I called all of those individuals to a breakfast, all 1,800 of them. As I began to put my, my gloves on, I said, apparently I'm not getting through to you with all the things that I've been talking about. So I want to give you an illustration. What are you looking at me like that for? <laughs> an illustration of the state of this company. And I want to give you an even better idea, and maybe you'll understand where we're going. So I went over to the box. Oh yeah, I got to tell you one more thing. There's a book called Make It Stick. It's by Chip and Dan Heath. I put, you, I put a book up there that I think you're going to love, and I'll tell you about that in a second. But this is a, a, a just as good a book, Chip and Dan Heath. The opening chapter says this. A friend of a friend was in an airport. plane was late. He went to get a drink. A very attractive female came up to him and said, can I buy you a drink? His age, he said, sure. He has a drink with her. And the next thing you know, he wakes up in a bathtub full of ice with a cell phone and a note that says, call 9-11. He calls 9-11, tells him he's in a bathtub of ice. He's groggy. The operator says, put your hand behind your back. Do you feel anything? He says, yeah, I feel a cord. She said, stay right where you're at. You've just had your kidneys transported. If we break and tonight I see you, will you remember that story? You're damn right you will. What about if I told you the basis of not-for-profit organizations raising funds, claiming it as a 5013C, and gave you all the details, would you remember that? Let me get back to what I have in the box. <laughs> Guys, our business is failing. Your 30 to 40 years of working with Pathmark, I said, is over. And for, you, for those of you that supplied us, forget about it because we're not going to do any more. I flipped it up. The lid came off. And I held up the prettiest thing you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> Salmo Salar, species name for salmon. OK? Touch it, sir. <laughs> I love salmon, though. I said, this is the company. Right here in my hands is the company. You see this fish, at the very end of his journey, swims upstream. Other fish are swimming down. The fish is going up there for a reason. He's swimming upstream, fighting the currents. The currents for us were competitors opening stores on us, bankers calling our debt. This fish, as it goes upstream, is on the lookout for predators, be eagles, bears, branches. We had predators too. We had competitors, people calling our debt, people opening up on new stores on us. They were going to put us out of business and kill us too. Now this fish, you see, when it gets to where it's going, it spawns and it dies. To all of you in the crowd, I told 1,800 people, we're dead. You didn't believe my graphs. You didn't believe my charts. You didn't believe the conversations I had with you. But I got to tell you something. We are the salmon, and we're dead if we don't get the business turned around. Finished it. 1,800 people, a large park kind of hung around. I get it, Jim, shook my hand. They were excited. I was excited, too. My first kind of delivery, if you will, of a talk to these people. I'll never forget this. My wife actually came to see me and have breakfast on the way home. I was so excited. I said, honey, I wonder how many great speakers there are out there today. And she patted me on the knee and said, one less than you think, dear. <laughs> Honor, courage, and commitment is about leadership. I'm not claiming to be on one side of the fence or the other, but President Obama said, I guess leadership isn't all about legislation. It's about persuasion. And what I want to talk to you today about, and what I want to tell you about, is leadership through honor, courage, and commitment. And there are six components that I'm going to talk about. OK, six components, and I just told you one. But let me finish the fish story, OK? So, we turned the company around. We got the financing we needed. 
but the fish became something of kind of a special thing. As I went left Pathmark to go to Starbucks, I became on the board of Pepsi-Cola on one of their committees as the CEO of Starbucks. My first day in 2005, eight years later, I walk into Pepsi headquarters in their boardroom and guess what is in the middle of the table? A salmon. We'll never forget it, Jim. It helped turn the business around. I went to borrow back to 1997, $500 million to keep the company afloat. My CFO gets in the car, we start driving, he goes, he looks back, he sees that white box. He's a CFO, right? He's got his tie on, he's looking kind of fancy and everything. He said, don't bring the fish. I said, we're bringing the fish and we're gonna get the $500 million. Well, we got the $500 million and that meeting was at the Waldorf Hotel in New York with about 100 bankers. Now here's the final piece. We take the company public, it's three years later. We're at the Waldorf Hotel, same room. Now we don't have creditors, we have actual investors. And I take my carousel of slides, I go back to the AV guy, I say, here are my slides, and he goes, Pathmark, huh? You should have been here three years ago. They had this crazy CEO who was waving this fish around. I'm telling you right now, there are six steps what I call leadership that I've used all my life, all 40 years in retail. Here's the first step. It's have, I'm gonna say it, a fish story. You have got to make sure when you lead, whether it's in the future, troops into war, whether you're leading a not-for-profit organization into a new venture, you can't go from A to B without telling them why. You've gotta be able to articulate in a storybook fashion a story. Reynolds Price, retired professor of English, Duke University, said in the species Homo sapiens, now listen to this, there are three critical components. Nourishment is one, three is shelter, but two, Homo, the, the, the species Homo sapiens cannot exist in silence. And storytelling, this is how much he believes in this, is critical for the survival of the species. And in leadership, all my life, I didn't graduate from the Naval Academy, I didn't go to some high class institution, but telling stories is full disclosure and people love it. Step number one, honor, courage, and commitment is storytelling for a reason for being. So, let me go to two. It was April 5th, 1992. It was before Pathmark. I drove into the headquarters at Walmart. Sam Walton had hired me to put Walmart in the food business. I noticed the flag was at half mast. Sam died. He was fighting cancer for three years and he died early in the morning, April 5th, 1992. As I went to get my sales, I thought about all the things that Sam had taught me in a very, very short period of time. But one thing stood out. He told me something three or four days before he died and it also made me reflect on a meeting he asked me to attend about three months earlier. He said, come with me to our warehouse. We wanna to talk to the warehouse workers, the morning shift and the afternoon shift and I want you there. So I'm sitting there and he's talking to these warehouse workers. And he goes to get his reading glasses. And everything comes out of his pocket. Now he has his fanny pack of cancer medication on and he's really weak and he's kind of trembling and he's putting all this stuff back in and he finishes his talk. He comes over to me and I said, are you okay, Mr. Sam? He said, I'm a little tired. And I said, would you like me to help you with the afternoon presentation? He goes, no, I'll do it. In the afternoon, in that same presentation, at that same time, he goes to get his reading glasses again. And once more, everything falls out. And he puts it back into his pocket and he comes over to me. He says, you get it? I said, I'm not sure. He said, you want to be a leader? I said, absolutely. He said...